Hey you guys, Dot Basichek here of Rome Wanderlust, and today I wanted to talk to you about an aspect of my lifestyle that has allowed me to live the lifestyle I live and travel the world. If you don't know already, I for the last two years I've been living out of my suitcase. I've been going from country to country, coast to coast, just traveling on the road constantly, not really staying anywhere for more than three months. And the only way that that's been made possible has been through my amazing network of friends and family. And everywhere I go, I have a place to stay. I have a home. Somebody has opened their home or their apartment to me, which is probably the biggest compliment anyone can pay me is to say, hey, if you're ever in my area, or hey, if you're ever around here again, like, feel free to come, like, feel free to crash on my couch or whatever. Like, to open those boundaries and to say, like, you're welcome in my space is a huge deal and not a day goes by that I don't you know think of myself as being extremely blessed in that regard for having so many doors open to me in the last two years I've only spent maybe five nights in a hostel and those times I don't even really count because I was with friends and we were just going somewhere where we didn't know anyone so we had to get a hostel and split the cost so um, it's made traveling very very economical for me because I don't have to stay in a hotel if I had to stay in a hotel or a hostel every single night for the last two years, then I would be broke. <laughs> so because of this, I have figured out through trial and error some things that you do and you don't do when you're a house guest and things that you do basically to get invited back. The first thing that you want to be aware of is space. So, you know, just make sure, unless it's been explicitly told to you that you can, you know, unpack and take up the drawer space, you know, you really want to keep your stuff contained. And you're living out of a suitcase, and that means you pull the stuff out that you need every day, and you keep the stuff in that you're not using, and you just really respect people's personal boundaries within their own home. The second tip is to spend time with your hosts. You know, don't just use them as a hotel. Uh, even though they probably realize that you're, you are just passing through and you do have other reasons for being in the area, like, let them know that you want to connect with them. And the way you do that is just by setting aside time to have meaningful conversation or to eat dinner with them or, you know, in whatever form that takes. Just make sure that it's been mutually understood that you like them and you want to be there with them. And you had choices or you could have gone somewhere else, but it's like, no, I really wanted to stay with you because I like you and I want to get to know you better. Make it more about them and they'll feel really appreciated. The third thing is to contribute in some way, you know, like, you know, walk their dog or be aware of the dishes or, um, you know, uh, if they need toilet paper, go out and buy them toilet paper. If you're, if you're going to the store to get some food, ask them, hey, is there anything I can pick up for you? Um, and don't expect to get reimbursed for that stuff, you know, just, just offer it as a gift because uh, those gestures are really, really important and they, they help keep the household running and you're part of the household in that moment. So it's just really important to acknowledge that. Okay, so the next tip I have is kind of like enveloping all of what I've been saying, but it's to be conscientious and read situations. So when you feel like there's tension or someone's been having a bad day or like there's just strain in some of these relationships that you're suddenly surrounded by, then give them space, you know, like know when to walk away and know when to ask them like, hey, is there anything I can do for you? And depending on their response, either help them out or, you know, give them some more distance because ultimately like you're in their space and they don't like, they don't want to feel like they have to please you every single moment of the day because uh, even though they're probably happy to have you, they, you know, it's not their job to keep you satisfied and they have their own problems in their own life that they're attending to. So just be aware of that. This also kind of goes into like what not to do. So recently I was staying somewhere where the person I was staying with had a roommate and I was using this roommate's bathroom because it was the more public bathroom and I just didn't really think about it. And so I, I went and I took a shower in their bathroom and when I went to pick up all my clothes, to, you know, put them back in my suitcase, uh, being respectful of boundaries, I accidentally dropped my underwear, and it's, you know, dirty underwear, and it was on their bathroom floor, and I didn't notice it, and later that day, he found my underwear, and I was mortified, like, I was really, really embarrassed, and he was kind of grossed out, and I, you know, you don't, it's not something you would ever wish to happen, 
upon yourself or to yourself and it happened to me and so in that kind of a situation I just made sure that like I expressed my sincerest apologies and that I made sure that he knew that it was completely unintentional I wasn't trying to like pull some sort of weird prank like this was a complete accident and I apologized profusely and tried to make my amends so you know stuff like that does happen and when it does just be conscientious and do the right thing and make sure that it's mutually understood that it was an accident or it wasn't intentional. The last and final tip that I have is kind of a no-brainer, but it's to be gracious. So there's a million ways to express gratitude, the most obvious being verbally, just saying you're so grateful and you're so glad that you had this time and this space to catch up with them and to, you know, you felt so safe in their environment and thank you for, for hosting me and all of these things. You can also express gratitude with a thank you note. I've been writing thank you notes for my entire life. I was raised to, to write them. And so it's been a practice that I've just kept up and I continually do it no matter where I'm staying. And I've gotten some really good feedback from people who say they really appreciated finding my note after I left and just feeling like, wow, that, you know, she really enjoyed staying with me and that was really important to her. Another way to express gratitude is to give gifts. Generally, when I give gifts, I prefer to give them some sort of consumable product, whether it's food or candles or lotions or something like that, um, because it's not it's gonna expire. Like it has a an expiration date, um, and I don't I don't expect them. I could get them art or some sort of decoration, but I don't really want to give them that expectation of like you have to have this up next time I come, or like, what if they don't like it? You know, even though you think you might know their taste, um, it's just safer to give them something that's, that's gonna be consumed. So yeah, those are my tips for being a good house guest. If you have any other experience with this sort of situation of, of being a house guest and you wanna add to the conversation, feel free to leave your comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below as well. And I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, I'll see you later.